lovely people! Hi, I'm Jessica and I'm disabled. This video also features Claudia, my wife, who is not disabled. So subscribe if you enjoy lesbians of varying abilities. This is part two of the video, My Wife is Not an Angel, um, because we talked for a really long time. But I think that it was quite a useful conversation that we had and we discussed many topics, so I decided to make a part two. That is the video you're watching right now. You can watch part one by clicking the link in the description down below or clicking in the card above in this corner. We were answering questions from the members of the Kelvin Ferrisard Club about what it's like to be in an interabled relationship. If you would like to become a member of the Kelvin Ferrisard Club and get access to a private, <gasps> secret, extra, monthly behind the scenes video, as well as an extra area of my Discord board and a whole range of other Goodies, then you can do so by clicking the join button next to the subscribe button below. And so, on with the video. Ah, this is a really good question, Lauren. What are the positives about having a disabled partner that you wouldn't have with an abled partner? First one's really obvious. Is it? You get to park everywhere. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially in Brighton, there's really limited parking. <laughs> so we have a disabled badge. Yeah. It's great! <laughs> yeah, that's good. You can just drive places door to door. There's loads of disabled bays as sort of a confident introvert. So, you know, sometimes I like to socialise, but sometimes I don't. Um, I can use Jessica as an excuse to usually just like back away. I'll be like, oh, what a shame. she's very tired now. It doesn't usually work because Jessica's like such an extrovert that even though she is tired, she pushes through it. <laughs> I'm exhausted and I keep talking. And, and I'm like, like Shut kicking her up. under the table like, you are really tired. tired now, we need to go. And she's like, oh, this is so much fun. I'm like, I'm not a <laughs> positive and a negative. No, um, I mean, that was a positive of my disabilities. It was a negative of my personality. <laughs> yeah. Oh, airports is really good because we get to go through special, oh, yeah. assistance. special assistance so we don't have to queue. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, lots of things um, to go to the front of the line for because I, I can't stand up very long. Basically, the benefits that you get from being a disabled person, the abled person just kind of jumps on that wagon. <laughs> and then also there's the obvious things like I've probably been educated in um, people who have chronic illness and disabilities, like hidden disabilities, and being more aware of yeah. people around me now of all ages, whether they're actually classed as disabled or whether they're just struggling that maybe I wouldn't have been so aware of in the past. So I think Which it's is really helpful for your job since yeah. you deal with the general public all the time. Yeah, and I think generally I'd like to think that would make me a, you know, not an angel, but um, a better human being. All right, Martha says, hope your neck is more tolerable now. Mm. Yes, thank you, it is. I sprained my neck. It was great and then it old shoulder dislocation thing. <laughs> oh, yes. it was fun. Do you ever feel like you want to protect Claudia or maintain some kind of normality, in denial maybe, by pretending something isn't as bad as it is? And how do you deal with those feelings if you have them? I completely do that all the time. Um, some of it's conscious and some of it isn't. I don't always tell you when I'm in pain. Sometimes that's unconscious because I'm like, boring. And sometimes it is a conscious thing where I'm like, okay, you know, you've got your stress of the day, you've had a problem at work, you wanna just unload. I'll just wait for you to get to the end of the story. And then I'll be like, <laughs> great story. I'm in crippling pain. Can you help? Yeah. I do tell you to, tr to tell me more, but also at the same time, I know that I'm quite difficult that I'm like, yeah, but like, it's about me right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> so. Yeah. Again, that just comes down to personality. A lot of the time I, like there's nothing she could do. I sometimes respond to Jessica's needs with anger mm -hmm. because I can't do anything to make it better. Like, don't know. Yeah, like, but you're just angry at the world. Disabled people or ill people or people who struggle with a mental illness. There is an element of, of course we want to protect those we love from knowing actually how it feels and how much it can really, really suck sometimes. Mm. I think it's sorry. difficult to portray to someone unless they have had first-hand experience sometimes, I the think, way it really feels. I think, for me personally, the best way would be when we're having a nice, time mm -hmm. like we're both in a good mood and um you're not in pain currently yeah we're just having a good day like we're out for dinner or we're like out having a lovely walk and then you approach the subject of telling me what it feels like when you're in loads of pain and when I come home and I moan because then it's not like nagging me it's like I'm just gonna tell you a little life story <laughs> just so you know and then I'm like hmm <laughs> 
<laughs> I'll take that on board, but I don't feel like I'm being put into a situation that I can't have any control over right now, and then I feel frustrated and angry. So then wow. I'd rather she told me another time, so then I'm like, okay, well next time I come home, I'll try and be more aware that Jessica might have had a bad day or is in pain. Wow. Okay, well, we've got the topic for our first dinner out of the house after lockdown. <laughs> Elisa Colwell wants to know, I'd like to know how you dealt with the fact that people would talk to Claudia instead of you when they were talking about you. Yeah, yeah, they well, talk to well, the, the people you. who are with me rather than talking to me. Yeah, that's really weird. If someone talks to me about Jessica, I just kind of like look at Jessica, like, I'm just like, <laughs> why are you talking to me? And deflect it onto like Jessica, who's like, oh, thank you so much, you know, or whatever. <laughs> like, and, or if they ask the, you know, sign interpreter, like, oh, does she want to do this? She's like, uh, you can ask her yourself. Yeah. Yeah, so like, I think so, I think it's the responsibility of the person who's being spoken to, to correct them politely to actually address Jessica. Yeah. It is an irritating feeling, but you do, it is about training the people around you, I suppose. Sometimes though, it's actually helpful if they talk to you instead of me. It's this weird thing I found where when we go to the doctor, if Claudia's there and she's able to talk about my pain or talk about a difficulty that I've been having, they listen to her more than they listen to me. I find that quite often people will listen to the able-bodied person in the room. I don't think it's about just being able-bodied in this situation. I think it's just because <laughs> you sometimes look quite ridiculous for someone who doesn't ah! know you. You know, you've just walked in, you've got like a bow in your hair or a tiara You've got like a mock fur jacket on. I don't know what you're talking about. You know, like, and you're like, oh, hello. I didn't, and like, when I first met you, I thought you were a bit of a joke, to be honest. Bit of a joke. Sorry. <laughs> but like, I just thought, and I remember I asked you on our second or third day, I was like, are you, are you actually like, is this? Are you actually really? like this all yeah, the time? I, like, but like, I just want to know you, like you. And she's like, this is me. And I'm like, are really? You? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, really? You don't you have any like other levels? Or I guess I go and I'm wearing like, a polo neck, or like, you know, I'm sitting there very stern, I choke out some like, medical sounding words occasionally. Whereas yeah, you're- Yeah, but- And I don't like people, so I'm like, sit there going- <laughs> I like people! Yeah, I'm like, mm-hmm, and, and will this be helpful for her? You know, whereas you're like, oh, thank you so much. Okay, you know? doctor, yeah. whatever you say. Yeah, I do look a bit silly. I do realise, I, I am aware yeah. that I look different, but I found, right, that disabled people are some of the most interesting dresses. I think partly it is a defense mechanism because if you look at me, <laughs> I look like this and I'm just like, woo, swaying from side to side. You kind of just think it's part of the thing. Um, if I dress like everyone else and then you saw me walking along, you'd be like, Jesus, <laughs> you're right. Yeah. Like, no, it hides things. Yeah, yeah, it does. This, this look. Yeah. And, and when I'm like, uh huh, uh huh. That's because you I don't understand what the hell you're saying. <laughs> but people let me get away with it. What kind of leads on to the next question of like mm. your personality and your aesthetic combined with your uh, disabilities um, with how you manage situations. Um, this person says, this is by Audrey Jones, says, uh, My husband suffers from migraines. Sometimes we can't cancel and I have to attend events or family get-togethers without him. How do you explain to people that no, he can't just take Tylenol and no, he isn't just trying to get out of coming? So I'm kind of lucky in the situation that um, my family are all medical background, so they appreciate how debilitating a migraine can be. Um, and I just kind of say it very much like, she's got a migraine, like end of, like. <laughs> Fight me. Yeah, and I think when they have asked like, oh, you know. Again? They've, they've, no, they've just never questioned that she would want to miss coming. Because again, that goes with your personality. Mm. Because you're such an extrovert and you like social gatherings, everyone knows if they know Jessica that she wouldn't not come unless you really I couldn't. would never miss a party. <laughs> yeah. So that, you know, for me is quite then easy for, to explain that situation. Sure, that's true. I have my own worries about it sometimes. Um, less with your family because they are medical, but when it's like other friends and you have to cancel on them. You were at first with my family before they yeah, knew you and true. my close friends from before. You were like, oh, but they probably, they don't understand. So and we've been married for three and a half years. So like your family and my family. So I, I know that they have more willingness for me, mm. but definitely to start with and with friends that I hadn't really met and spent time with, I was like, they're, they're gonna think I'm 
ridiculous. Yeah. That's an interesting one. This one is from Angela Gallant. I follow another interabled YouTube couple and they seem to get a lot of comments about how the non-disabled partner must have a fetish for disability. Does Claudia ever receive the opposite of you're an angel comments? I don't really look at the comments, so I wouldn't know. And I think, um, yeah, I and think Clara's I mean, like, really good life. at moderating them. Like she kind of gets rid of anything that might upset us. So who knows? That was my answer. No, yeah, that's fair. But no, I've never seen a, I've never seen a comment or had anyone message me. I mean, I never knew it was even a thing until we had a conversation with some friends about how it is. Oh yeah, when I did the Hannah Witten roundtable, yeah, and everyone was like, oh my goodness, some people are really into that. Yeah, there's like a name for it, isn't there? There is. But yeah, no. But I have memory loss, so. For both of you, is this relationship the first interabled relationship either of you have had? Did either of you have doubts about being an interabled couple as your relationship grew? Selfish question, have you grown tired of my long-winded comments? A moment of levity, haha. -ha. Unless you have, in which case I apologize. Never, Richard, <laughs> never. Uh, I would say this was my first interabled relationship. Um, for me, uh, Yes and no, because I think as a disabled person, I'd have a pretty small dating pool if I only dated other disabled people. So I had one girlfriend before Claudia, but we were like young and it was long distance in that we saw each other every other weekend. It was more that we messaged each other on WhatsApp a lot. But yeah, that was an interabled relationship and definitely I downplayed a lot about the pain that I was in and what I could and couldn't do. And because I saw her rarely, I would hide what was happening and then spend the rest of the week really paying for it. Like I had used up all of my energy. I would literally get on the train from hers to Brighton. Ridiculously long train journey. Why was I doing it alone? Really wasn't safe in retrospect. Um, and I would just- do for love, you know, oh, blind love. Puppy love when you're a kid. You thought she was the love of your life Of course time. I did, I think like, I was, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I'd get on the train and I'd pass out because I was in so much pain. And I'd be there in one of my, you know my awful migraines where I can't lift my head? Mm. That's what I would be like oh on this God. train. People yeah. also thought you were a drug addict. Probably. That's what you look I'm like. I mean, I'm a very well-dressed drug addict. Well, yeah, but so, you still, uh, you don't hold yourself well when you've got one of those migraines. <laughs> no. Remember that time when we were in Oaxaca? Oh God, yeah. And like, wow. we, like you looked like you had had like, <laughs> 10 beers and ever and the wait but you were just drinking water and the waitress was a bit like See and all of our friends are so nonplussed because they're just used to this so just continue talking as i'm like so i like slumped you up and we'll be my last interview yes i will my last relationship last relationship ever yes just does forever I know, just because sometimes goes, you're going to be my wife forever. But she does it in this like little voice and then sometimes it gets a bit creepy. And I'm like, I never made the right decision. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm wounded. <laughs> you love me. Thank you so much for watching. You are stunningly gorgeous for having gotten this far through the video. Let me know in the comments if you are gorgeous. Subscribe if you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more from Claudia and I. We also have a playlist, a Jessie and Claude and a Jessie v Claude playlist, where we do various artistic challenges together. And finally, a little reminder that I will be missing my next upload, normally I upload twice a week, but this week it is just this one time, and then everything will be back to normal next week. I just need a break, because um, right now uh, we're in lockdown. Uh, in a house that has building work and no heating and sometimes no hot water and right beneath me There's nothing. This room is just supported by some steel rods. Anyway, I'll see you in a week's time Mwah.